Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Among the most daunting tests in naval aviation is the art of landing fighter jets on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Or an LHA. Or landing helicopter assault ship. as it glides through the unpredictable waves. Thankfully, many Navy jets have the remarkable technology of VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. From the pioneering days of the Harrier jump jet, VTOL has redefined what is possible in the realm of flight. Today, the torch is carried by the cutting-edge F-35B Lightning II. It flies like a plane, but also possesses the power to take off and land like a helicopter. Defying the needs for conventional runways, the AV-8A the precursor to the legendary AV-8B Harrier emerged as a groundbreaking plane in the world of aviation. Introduced in the late 1960s, this aircraft's ability to vertically take off and land gave it the ability to operate from the shortest of runways. Equipped with swiveling nozzles that redirect engine thrust, the AV-8A's capabilities laid the foundation for the Harrier's future legacy. Building upon the success of its predecessor, the AV-8B Harrier underwent significant improvements in avionics, engine performance, and weapon systems. The AV-8B's Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine, coupled with vectoring nozzles, allowed the aircraft, which was first introduced in the 1980s, to transition seamlessly from horizontal flight to vertical descent. It was during these vertical landings that the Harrier demonstrated its remarkable precision and control touching down on the deck of naval ships or confined areas with finesse. Then, in the new millennium, the F-35B Lightning II was introduced. This jet represents the pinnacle of modern technology it can lift up like a helicopter or use its engines to do a very short takeoff. When the stealth fighter needs extra assistance taking off from an aircraft carrier, it can come in the form of a ski jump ramp. On these UK ships, the upward slope of the ramp allows planes to generate additional lift, reducing the aircraft's takeoff distance. As the pilot increases the throttle, the F-35B accelerates rapidly along the ramp. At a precise moment, the engine nozzle rotates downward, directing thrust vertically. Using the ramp on aircraft carriers not only enhances the F-35B's takeoff performance, but also expands the operational capabilities of the carrier itself. 
The F-35B's lift fan, located in the aircraft's fuselage, assists in generating additional lift during vertical takeoff and landing. It eliminates the need for catapult-assisted takeoff, which is how most aircraft without VTOL capabilities are flung into the air. Arrested landings are another critical aspect of aircraft carrier operations. They ensure the safe recovery of fighter jets on the deck. On the USS Theodore Roosevelt, the crew prepares the deck for an incoming plane. Sailors work synchronously, wearing bright green jerseys to let everyone know their essential role. They carefully inspect the arresting gear, which includes cables, engines, and hydraulic systems, ensuring they are in perfect condition to withstand the immense forces generated during landing. Arrested landings are most commonly done on Cato Bar and Stowe Bar aircraft carriers. Cato Bar stands for Catapult Assisted Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. And Stowe Bar is the acronym for Short Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. There are also similar arrested landing systems at land-based airfields for emergency use. Typical systems consist of steel wire ropes laid across the aircraft landing area, designed to be caught by an aircraft's tail hook. During a normal arrestment, the tail hook engages the wire and the aircraft's kinetic energy is transferred to hydraulic dampening systems attached below the carrier deck. The careful coordination of getting the cables prepared as the plane makes its descent and then making sure they're removed from the plane as it taxis to parking is all thanks to the sailors working in the aircraft carrier's island and bubble. The island is the nerve center of the ship. Housing the carrier's command facilities, control rooms, and communications infrastructure. The bubble is stationed in the carrier flight deck, protected by plexiglass and steel. This is where sailors can provide communication about what's happening during each aircraft launch and recovery. As a fighter jet hurdles towards the deck of an aircraft carrier, the pilot's expertise and nerves of steel are put to the ultimate test. The aircraft approaches the landing area with tremendous speed. In a split second, the pilot must engage the tail hook, the small metal apparatus suspended beneath the aircraft, 
while maintaining an absolute focus on the arresting wires ahead. Arrested landings embody the extraordinary partnership between pilots, carrier crews, and cutting-edge engineering. The combination of technology, human skill, and sheer determination unfolds in a moment as the aircraft screeches to a halt, its engines roaring and the arresting wires shaking under strain. If all goes according to plan, the tail hook catches one of the cables, subjecting the aircraft to intense deceleration forces. This process sometimes happens on land, too. Field Carrier Landing Practices, or FCLP, are crucial training exercises replicating the conditions pilots face when landing on an aircraft carrier. Conducted regularly at MCAS Miramar, the practice exercises replicate the limited space and precision required for carrier landings. During FCLP, pilots hone their abilities, ensuring they are well prepared for the unique challenges they will face out at sea. Advanced arresting gear training equips personnel with the knowledge and skills necessary to operate the system. Check that comes up. The will be. First, there is a classroom instruction. To, uh, then, hands on training takes center stage. Students engage in exercises that simulate various scenarios, making them familiar with the equipment. Under the guidance of experienced instructors, trainees practice operating the AAG system in coordination with aircraft approach and landing sequences, ensuring seamless integration and efficiency. The crews who help the pilots land on carriers also practice the task on land first. When an arresting cable becomes damaged or worn, prompt repairs are essential to ensure that more planes can be landed safely. The first step in cable repair is an inspection to learn the extent of the damage. Trained technicians look for signs of wear, fraying, or other forms of degradation. This inspection involves a visual exam, stress tests, and measurement of the cable's dimensions. Once the damaged sections of the cable are identified, the repair process begins. Repairing an arresting gear cable involves removing the damaged portion and splicing it into a new section. Splicing involves stripping insulation, cleaning the surfaces, and ensuring proper alignment. Personnel involved in cable repair wear plenty of protective equipment. Once the new section of cable is in, it must be secured and capable of withstanding the high forces and stresses encountered during arrested landings. That's why it undergoes rigorous testing to verify its integrity and strength. Load tests may be performed to simulate the forces experienced during landing and ensure the repaired cable can safely handle these forces without snapping and snapping 
can be incredibly dangerous. That's why throughout this process, crews adhere to strict safety measures. There are so many challenges when it comes to landing advanced fighter jets on U.S. Navy ships. Still, thankfully, the U.S. military has created technological advancements to make this process as safe and efficient as it can possibly be, every step of the way. As naval forces continue to evolve, integrating advanced technologies, enhanced training methods, and ongoing maintenance efforts will shape a future where landing fighter jets on naval ships becomes even safer, more efficient, and more integral to maritime operations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.